Are you ready to up-level your sales game? Well, here is a gift for you. It is the Mastering the Sales Conversation mini training. This training gives you my proven step-by-step approach to sales so that you can go from that overwhelmed and intimidated approach that you have to sales to feeling confident and leading a conversation so that you easily guide somebody to hiring you. You can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash mastering. This is my gift to you. Go grab it now. sales conversations make you feel awkward or pushy, it's time to ditch the outdated salesy strategies. Your guide, Nikki Roush, will show you how to combine kindness with selling skills to meet your prospects where they are, and in the process, how to up-level your influence and income. Learn how to earn business easily and effortlessly. Here's Nikki. Welcome, and thank you for listening to The Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Roush. I'm your own personal sales maven here to offer you tips and strategies and techniques to master your sales conversations. Today's episode is all about how to recommend what a client needs versus what they're actually asking for when the two don't align. There will always be situations where a prospect is asking you for something that sure, you might be able to deliver, but you know, based on your expertise and your authority in your particular topic, that it isn't going to be the right thing to solve their problem or meet that specific goal or need that they have mentioned. And maybe you even have the perfect solution So how do you bring that into the discussion without alienating or making that client feel wrong? That's what we're going to be talking about today on the podcast. So these are one of those situations when somebody is asking for something from you and you suspect, or maybe you know, that you have a better option. And chances are you do know, right? I get that a lot with clients where they're like, Nikki, I I know what this person needs and they're asking me for something different and how do I handle that? So that's actually why I decided to chat about this with you today on the podcast because this has been coming up in client sessions. My take on this is when a prospect is asking for something, you don't want to diminish in any way that what they're asking for is wrong or um, that there's something wrong with them, right? So you don't want to send the message that they're wrong. What you do want to do is validate (laughs) that based on what they know so far and the experience and what they're asking for, you want to validate how that will potentially work for them. And you want to offer what you know to be the right solution. So I think it's really important that you don't just diminish the thing that they're asking for. And I hear that a lot. Um, I have clients say to me, like, I'm not even going to, you know, quote them on this thing that they're asking for. And I always want to like, hey, slow down a little bit. Because think about it, when you're in the position and it's your money on the line and you're asking somebody to provide you with information, pricing or whatever that is, and they just flat out refuse or they ignore the request and they do their own thing. Now, of course, they're doing what they think is in your best interest, but sometimes we don't like when people act like they know more about our best interest than we do. So you don't want to be that person that's treating a prospect like you know more about their best interest than they do. Even if there's a part of you right now that's thinking, but I do, (laughs) I get it. However, from a relationship and a rapport standpoint, that is not the best approach. The best approach is to validate based on what they know and their own expertise, what what they're asking for. So give them what they're asking for. Is it really going to hurt you to quote something along with the quote on the thing that you know is the right solution? Probably not. But yet... It sends the message, I hear you, I respect your request, and I'm following through on the commitments that you're asking me to keep to. So I think this is really important. 
I had a, um, a discovery call a while back with a prospect. Now she came to the call already having decided that she knew that her next best step was to join my group coaching program, the Sales Maven Society. Now, after having a conversation with her, my recommendation in order for her to achieve what it is that she had set out to achieve and in a pretty short period of time there was some there was some time pressure attached to it my recommendation was to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching so that we could do some really intensive work and that she could have access to me on a daily basis when um, she was having all of these interactions with prospective clients so I have to think about in that moment, how do I propose that to her? Because she's thinking that she wants to sign up for one thing. And my suggestion is something completely different. And my suggestion is something that is in a very different price point than what she was initially thinking. So when I find myself in this situation, which I do often, right? And you probably do too with your prospective clients, then what I did is I definitely validated and said, yes, we would absolutely love to have you in the society. You know, the advantages of being in there are this, this, and this. My recommendation for you would actually be to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Would you be open to hearing a little bit more about what that would entail and the benefits that you would receive from it? So I'm going to ask permission. I'm not going to ignore her request. I'm, I'm validating right off the bat, absolutely, she can sign up for the society. And I'm making my recommendation on what I know is the right solution for her. Now, in this particular case, this, this client is very like, she knows her own kind of mind and she likes to make her own decisions. So even though she was open to hearing my recommendation, she was pretty determined that she was going to do it her way. So she started in the society. So I'm not going to, you know, tell her like, it's either private coaching or nothing, right? So in this particular case, she didn't want to take my recommendation. That's okay. I'm not attached to her taking my recommendation. As a matter of fact, what ended up happening is she signed up for the society. She was in it for a couple weeks and then reached out to me and said, Nikki, I need, I need more from you. I need to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, which we ended up doing. And we got her the results that she was looking for in a pretty short period of time. So that's okay. And it's not even like me walking around going like, see, I was right. Like you were wrong. No, it's like, whatever is going to be that thing that is the right solution for her. So I always believe that people know what the right solution for them is. And my job is to just be the guide and when they're open to it, to make a recommendation. Do you know how to recognize and act on a buying signal? I have a gift that is going to teach you the 17 buying signals so that you're ready when you get them to take action and move somebody to the next part of the sales conversation. You can get this right now by going to your sales maven dot com forward slash maven. Go grab it now. Now, another situation that came up, this actually came up in a coaching call where a client had asked me, um, a prospect had reached out and wanted a proposal. They're, they're, kind of parameters around what they were looking for was kind of squishy. Like they didn't really have a budget. They, they knew kind of the basics of what they wanted, but she did a great, my client did a great job in the discovery call and uncovered like what the true needs were and what the right solution was. But what they were asking for was something very different than the solution that she would propose. So her question to me was, I don't even want to send them a proposal on this other thing because I know it's not going to actually get them the solution that they want. And the thing that I'm going to propose is a very different price point, a much higher price point. Now, again, this client didn't, the prospect in this case, didn't really give a budget, but my client suspected that what she wanted to recommend to them would maybe be outside what they were expecting as far as pricing. My recommendation to her was to propose both, 
Now, on the proposal itself, to list her recommendation first on the proposal, and then second, give the option that they had originally asked for, and let them have the ability to make a comparison. Of course, you can put yourself in a position to have a conversation, to walk them through the differences, and actually you should do that in a proposal, But don't just ignore and leave their thing off the proposal because again, it sends that message like I'm not listening to you and who wants to buy from a salesperson that doesn't listen? You need to listen. So validate, put both options on there. And that's ended what she, what my client ended up doing. She went back, she gave them the two options so they could make a decision. And when they can see them, you know, on on the same proposal, like here's the recommendation, here's all the benefits of this particular option, which I suggested that that's option one, and option two was more in a line for what they would what they had originally requested. So put your recommendation first. And then make sure you give the option that they asked for. And now they get to choose and that's okay. So based on this, just to kind of wrap up where we're going here is it's really important that you still validate their request. So you send the message. I hear you. I respect what you're asking for. And I certainly will give you pricing on the thing that you have requested, or I will give you a proposal And when appropriate in a live conversation, my suggestion is ask permission to propose what you know to be the better solution for them. So I actually want to give you some language around it. Um, And this is how I would do it, kind of using the example um, that I gave for um, my client that had wanted to be in the Sales Maven Society. So I would say, yes, we can certainly get you started in the Sales Maven Society and actually we can get you signed up today. So that's me validating like, I hear you, I I can absolutely meet your request. Then I would say, and actually did say, my recommendation based on what you've shared would be to explore a more intensive coaching package. Would you be open to hearing about what that would entail and how it supports you in achieving the goals that you mentioned? Wait. So I don't just launch into it. Now, if you're doing a written proposal, you could prep them for this, right? That this is coming. So the way you would do that is you would say, yes, I will put together a proposal to, or excuse me, I will put a proposal together for you on your, on what you've requested. I'd also like to propose what I know will be a better fit based on what you shared and what you're looking to achieve. Both options will be listed on the proposal so you can see the difference between them and then decide for yourself what is the right solution for you. So I'm prepping them that it's coming so they're not shocked when they see something else on the proposal. So that is my recommendation for you. I hope you found this podcast helpful. I hope it gets you thinking about when somebody asks for something that maybe isn't aligned with what you know they actually need, how to do it in a way that keeps the rapport intact, that allows for you to stand in your place of expertise and authority and keeps the ball moving forward so that you get to the place where you actually exchange dollars for services and or product. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. If you found this particular episode helpful, would you please either rate and or share it with a friend? I so appreciate hearing from you. And if you want to reach out to me personally, I'd love to hear what was your big takeaway or aha from today's episode. I am wishing you continued success in all that you're doing. Take care. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills. Are you ready to increase your confidence in your sales conversations? I have a gift for you that is going to show you exactly how to do that. It is my Closing the Sale ebook. It's all about leveling up your confidence, giving you language to use, how to seamlessly move somebody through the sales process. And you can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash maven. Go grab it.